So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look, finally, at yeah. <laughs> Brave, little embarrassing. Brave Little Belgium. Yeah. This is from Hollenspieler Games, and it's designed by Dave Shaw and Ryan Heilman. And I say finally, because we met them almost a year ago. At WBC. At WBC. Yep. And they were... Um, they were kind of demoing it and showing it, and it was kind of yeah. pre-production, but it was it was a finished game. Yeah. Um, so we played it then, probably about a year ago, and this was released 2019. I, I want to say it was like January. January. Oh, yeah. Was, so here it is, June. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is an introductory war game, and yes. there's a lot of games that call themselves introductory war games, and eh. are a little more complex. Yeah. Or this is not that. No. This is a very simple, mechanically, uh, game at least. Yeah. The rule book is six pages? Yeah, six, actually it's five pages with five pages. the very top of a sixth. And so it's not rules heavy. I've had games with fewer rules than that be more complex than this. I agree. I agree. The rule book is very clear. Yes. It leaves very little to be, I, I mean, I, there was no points of confusion or anything no. like that. It, pretty much everything is covered, and it's very simple language. Most people just be able to read that and understand it. So, mm -hmm. this is one game that I seal of approval will say. Yeah, this is a great gateway war game. Yes, if you've got people playing Axis and Allies or those kind of games, and you want to get them into a bit more historics. This is, it's it's, it's a great introduction to. Yeah. The, the hex encounter well there's no hexes it's yeah. area movement it's, but chit and chit and yeah you got chit draw movement point point. Yep. you have counters which have infantry yep. and cavalry but it's still chucking a bunch of dice yep bucket of dice doing some hits back and forth but it's it is a set historical campaign as you right. might imagine right. Belgium beginning of World War 2 yeah and it's, World War 1 is it World War 1 yeah it's World War 1 <laughs> my bad that's okay <laughs> my bad sorry this the same outcome for both campaigns, isn't it? Yeah, right, right. But uh, it's them. It's the Germans just carving through Belgium, tr trying to get to northeast France, basically. Yep. So it is a set structure, right? There is a story and a narrative to tell in this game that's not going to change from game to game. No. The Germans are always trying to do the same thing, and the Belgians, the Entente, the the French, and the very small BDS English, stack. Yeah. They're trying to stop them from just rolling across Belgium, basically. So, well, and, and let, let me let me kind of clarify a point you just said. It is it is kind of the same because of terrain and geography, right? You, you in order to do what the Germans have to do, they have to go kind of at the same area. Well, you got to take out these two forts, and then you got to get across this point. So it's. It, it, there's only so many ways to attack it. And the, and the objectives don't change from game to game. No, they do not. They don't move. They don't change. So you, you can't end around it. You don't have enough turns. You know, it's a very quick game. Or, or you get very lucky if you're able R to do that. Right. I, don't, I almost cannot see in any way, shape, or form <laughs> you could do anything other than just directly going this way. But I wanted to clarify that because I think that really is... It, it is a historical simulation. Yes. Turned into a very introductory uh, war game that actually has a lot of very cool, kind of a potpourri of different types of mechanics. Yes. And I wanted to talk about the story of the game because a lot of people that don't play a lot of war games are expecting a symmetrical or balanced game. Right. You're playing chess, we've got equal sides, equal space. This is not that. The, the and French, the Belgians are in no way, shape, or form equal. To the Germans, and they and they're not doing a lot of attacking. No, they're, they are. That is not defense, what they're trying to do. Back, yep. Opportunistic counterattack. The Germans yep. are trying to go pinpoint, spearhead where they can, break Crush through, and move, and, and run. Yep. And that that's that's why this makes a good introductory war game. Yeah. Because not only does it give you mechanics, so many war games we play are like this, right? Yeah. Where it's, History wasn't even sides clashing together 50-50. No. It's just it's not what you were doing. No. And so this is a good way to show that in a game that's an hour long, yes. start to finish. And, th and that's the key. It's 60 minutes. Yeah. And it really is 60 minutes. Yeah. Um, 
And because it's only five pages of rules and it's very clear. And what? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's eight turns. If it goes to the very end. To the very end, yeah. And, and frankly, the game can be over in six. It's possible. Yes. Um, but that's one thing I really like about this game. Yeah. Is that not only does it teach you war game mechanics, but it shows you that a lot of war games, you're playing it for the history and for a simulation. Yes. It's trying to change the outcome, but it's a lot, sometimes the odds are stacked against you. Well, and, and I remember when we played it at WBC and we, we were talking to Dave and Ryan, and you know, they were talking about literally the, like the guard Savik, they are nothing more than roadblocks or speed bumps. You know, not even roadblocks. Yeah. Because they're not really going to stop you. They're just going to They're slow. just going to slow you down. And, and it's very interesting. That's a random setup. I know there's a variant where I think you can do it more historically, maybe. So there's you can you can kind of set and place them yourself. As okay, you get to choose. Yeah. We did not do that. We did random rolls. But it, 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 what you're trying to say is it really is an exercise in being outmanned, outgunned, and outpowered, but still trying to delay yes. and stop and slow down a a much superior force. And, and I think that's really cool. And it's not just one-sided. That's the really no, neat no. thing about this. Uh, we played to a draw in the game. We, we did. Played, right? Yep. And it's... The Germans have to execute extremely well and get some decent die rolls in. They have to get a little bit of luck. And we talked about it, but I just rolled terribly. Yes. So, so these forts, Liege and... and Namur, it took three or four turns to get through them. Typically, I don't think that's going to end in a historical result of a draw. It's going to end typically, I think, in a loss because you got to get by those. You just really have to get by them. Yeah, and it's so it is a you chuck a bunch of dice, and if you even get average results, this is going to be two rounds, would be my guess, right? Well, it depends. If you get your events, depends how much they're reinforced. Yeah, you reinforced a lot in this game that we just played. There's a lot to it in that sense. So you you get some really cool little tactical nuance of do I put my infantry in there a little bit better? Yeah. Or do I wait and defend in later kind of spaces to or hold them hold them close enough to make a a good enough counterattack to make a difference. So that's what I again enjoy about this game. Yeah. It's very quick, but there's still some interesting or tough choices to make as yep. well. Um, well, and I also like the strategic concept for both the Germans and for the Entente because the Germans, you really have to make a decision. Do you go hard? Do you hard charge right here, you know, kind of through the forts? Or do you, with one of your armies, try to go kind of around the horn? And, and the, the intent there is what? To hold your French forces from... Just sweeping to the north. Yeah. So, you know, I tried that. I don't know that it was very effective because my rolls weren't great. Well, they were bad down there. And and we talked about maybe it would be better if I'd have hard charged to Namur with them. So I like that you have those choices that you can try a couple different things. Yes. And your die results may not be great. Your chip pull may not be great. But you can try it. And I like that. I think that's a cool thing. What I'll do is I'll show you the map. And just some of the very simple mechanics that are in this, and we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the board. It's a very, it's you know, a small little board. Not a lot of table space needed for this game. These are all of our kind of dead counters. We had a lot in this game. Um, the green are the Belgians, the blue are the French, and the the BEF, the British Expeditionary Force, have a, a little stack of little kind of tan counters and the rest of the gray the German pieces. So we got to August 22nd through 24th. This was a, a tie. If the Germans can get into France, having destroyed the two major forts at Liege and Namur, then they win. At this point, this is a tie if they do it here, and if they do it here, then um, it's an Entente victory. So each of the counters, and we'll just take a look at a couple here. Um, very simple. These are the kind of those laser cut counters we have. Um, they show on here, he says, if I can get these in focus. This is German cavalry, and it just tells you they have, they roll and they, a dice and they hit on a five. 14th Brigade hit on a six, 
And then we have like the BEF infantry here. They hit on uh, four. And what, what you do is you just chuck a bunch of dice. So when stacks meet, so let's say this would never happen in a game. Uh, if the French and this G German stack here were to meet, you basically move over to the little battle board over here and you lay them all out. Combat's in Ghent, so we know where to put these back once we're done. And you just roll a bunch of dice. So we have four German units, and they, they need fours to hit, and you roll simultaneously. And they rolled two hits. And then the French, they have four units here needing fours, and they roll one hit. They also have one unit here needing a six, which they don't get. And quite simply, you assign your hits. So the, the German player does two hits here, so we're going to remove this one, and then we're going to reduce this one. That's two hits. And the German player is going to absorb one hit, flipping this to its reduced side. Because the French were attacking, they're going to move back because they didn't win the combat. They suffered more losses, and the Germans are going to sit there. That's a combat. It is honestly that simple. The only real modifiers that you might have are uh, there are some of the chits in this chit draw cup that do like plus one to your dice rolls. Um, that's the major thing. The other major thing that you will come across are the, f the, bi the big forts. And there's a few small forts, but these two major ones are where combat is always going to happen. And what we'll do is we'll stick a couple guys in the fort and look at a combat and what that might look like. But it's very similar in its concept. So let's say we have the German second army and they're going to siege Namur. So the same thing, you move everything over to the battle board and you roll dice again. Now the important part of this is the Namur fortress counter, okay? This is that and you can see it shows, um, it has kind of a, a bunch of pips here at the top. You got four pips, three pips, two pips, one pip. It's kind of like a block war game in that way. This is how many steps this counter has, and it hits on a five, which is that five dice in the middle. So, this might only be three counters, but this is a lot of dice they're going to chuck. So this is, hits on a five, hits on a six. So, the Belgians have four dice from the fort, and one from the fifth infantry. So they're going to roll five dice, needing fives. Well, that's two hits. And then they've got one dice needing a six, a miss. So they're going to do two hits, and then we've got... Three dice needing fours for the Germans. Those are three misses, that's not what you want to see. And then one dice needing a five, that's a hit. Now what's important here is that this hit can never be put on this fort until everyone else has been eliminated. So you have to kill all the guys inside the fort, then you start doing your hits to the fort. So if you kill those guys, then this gets turned to a three. Well now the fort only rolls three dice. And if it gets hit again, it's only going to roll two dice. So you have to weaken everything, and then you're able to eliminate the fortress. That's part of the victory conditions. But really, that's the, the major parts of combat. Um, one of the events, let me see if I can't dig it out here, is Big Bertha, which we all know, big, huge howitzer. And when you play this, if you're the Germans attacking a fort, you will always do a damage to the fort prior to eliminating everyone. So it's a very powerful thing and you will have to use it to make good progress in this game as Germans. So that's combat. Movement is infantry have two movement points, one point, two points, or again along these kind of wiggly bits, that's two points. So it's kind of slow going um, with all the different points in the slower parts as well. Movement's very simple. The really cool part is the chit draw. And this is kind of your turn activation and turn order. So each of the different um, armies, so you can look, this German is a red, the first army, the third army is kind of a purple, and then we had the second army, or a pink here, and then there's the fourth army down here that are, a, uh, are an orange, and then there's a couple of French armies, the, uh, the Belgians and the BEF. They all have chits that eventually get put in, there's some events, and there's an end turn marker. And effectively what you do is you blindly draw one, and the first one is, oh, an end turn marker, great. If once you get three of those, the turn ends. 
you draw another one, and we have another turn in marker. That's not what you want to see. Hey, that happened like almost all the time. <laughs> now we have a plus one German attack marker. So the Germans, anytime they do an attack from now on, they can use this marker to get a plus one to their dice rolls. Next chip is activation of the blue army. So, oh, no, purple, sorry. So German third army, they've only got one reduced guy left on the board, so he's just gonna try and move up here and save himself. Next chip is another event, and this is Big Bertha. So we're just gonna put that, that's now available. Next chip is the French, it's the carry. So the French are gonna move, and it's this French fourth army. So they've got a cavalry unit here. Let's see, what are they gonna do? Uh, let's see. They were just, they can move, the cavalry can move four spaces, so they're gonna try and kind of move down here as a blocking action. And they've got this army down here, so let's say they would do an attack. Great, you resolve the attack. Next chip is the BEF. All the BEF are dead, so we'll get rid of that. Next chip, an event. Next chip, a Belgian event, plus one movement. And that's, that's the flow of the game, and eventually, you will pull your third turn end marker. Great, the turn ends. That's good news for the young top player. They're, try they're trying to rush the game as quick as possible with, um, without losing these two forts and the, Ger and the Germans getting into, into France, basically. Now what happens is, if the turn ends and the Germans haven't activated all of their units, this is where we look over at this um, tragic atrocities track. So what, what the German player can do is they can say, well, I really desperately need to move so I'm going to try to force march my armies that didn't already do something. So they're going to start with this guy down here, and they're going to roll a dice. They're going to say, these guys are going to force march. On a roll of one, two, or three, um, they can move and do everything normally. If they roll a four, five, or a six, this atrocities marker goes up one. If it ever gets to five, the Germans automatically lose the game, because the atrocities that were done in rushing through everything uh, not enough care was taken, and basically the international community turns against them in every conceivable way. So it, it, it's a way for the Germans to keep moving when they need to, because the turn ends too quickly, but there's a risk-reward factor. And it's a dice roll, and it goes up, but it's a dice roll, so you'll have chances, or if things get here, you're like, well, I'm probably not going to force march anymore. But that's one of the, the really neat things about this game. Um, I really like the look of this game. It's very clear, it's very um, simple, but you know, the, the little airmail envelope, the clipboard, the nice touches like that just give this a, a really nice feel to it. And the game itself, Joe was rushing from one side to the other, on top player, really just trying to stop them and stop them early enough, that's all. Um, so that's a look at the board. What we'll do, we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the game. Uh, it's a really simple game. The designs it's quite elegant almost. Well, I think it's a very tight design. Yeah. I think it's very well done, once again, for what it is trying to accomplish. And we did an interview with Ryan and Dave at mm -hmm. WBC. You can watch that. And they talk about the design changes and the process they went through. Yeah. Because it's interesting hearing them talk about this from years and years and years ago when they first kind of tried to cobble a game together mm -hmm. and it went through a lot of change and the product that you have is the perfect game to teach another yeah. person and get them into a more historical war game yeah. uh, to play on your table. Um, it does a lot of nice things very cleanly yeah. and that's a credit to the design. Well, I, I like the point-to-point -point movement. I like the use of the terrain. I thought the events were really cool. Yeah, You know, the events, depending on when they come out, they can either really help you or they become completely worthless. But man, they, they are, they're nice for the Germans. Without them, it's very hard to do. I love the concept of the turn-in markers being drawn. How many times did we draw two, did you like, draw immediately? Two and you were just like, <laughs> oh, it's almost over. So, so you, you talked about that a little bit as you looked at the map, but the turn, the round ends when you draw that third. Yeah. And... I, I bet it happened three or four times where we would draw those first two within the first yeah, four or five or chip, yeah. chip pulls, and it's like, oh my gosh. Then every it's chip pull, the Germans sweating. Yeah. Like, oh. But I like that you're sweating, but I also like the atrocity part. Don't say you like the atrocity. That, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> what I like is the option of a forced movement, forced activation. Yes. 
which when you're hurrying those troops through that, that you have the opportunity for them to get a little out of control and, and accumulate some atrocities. Yes. You have to roll that die. What do you get a four or higher? You get like an atrocity. Four or higher, that atrocity track moves up. If it ever gets to five, the game's over the game's automatically. Over. So that that I like that push your luck element. I liked even that when the round ended, I was like, oh, okay, you know, no sweat. I can try it. And then when you roll a four, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, and then I when really I needed to activate this other one as well. So yeah. you're on a couple of those in a turn. You're like, okay. I got to three. So literally two from, but I love that. I thought that was very elegant design by creating this in-turn mechanic, but then allowing the Germans who losing a turn would be devastating. Yes, they have if, to move. If literally you drew those all three and you couldn't go, I think the game almost would would end for the Germans. So I like yeah. that. I really like the events, the combination of the underpowered Entente, but the forts are really cool. You know, the forts are rolling, what, four and five dice? They're not great. The big forts. The big forts. You know, they're not hitting. They're hitting on, what, fives or higher? Yeah, hit on a five. But I I like that. That's a historical uh, element. And I I don't know. It really came down to the end. We we ended up doing a historical draw, a result, historical result draw. And, and we talk a lot about games. If I played a six-hour game, and, and remember the one game that we played in it, like 12 hours worth of Wilderness War. Yeah, and it was a tie. Man. And it was a tie. This game, I'm okay with a tie because it's 60 minutes. And it's not really a tie. That's the... No. It's a... Historical the result. Germans still the still roll through, but yep. it's, they didn't do it fast enough. The or, Germans met all of their conditions... They just didn't do it fast enough. Yeah, and it allowed the front the French to rally so that it would come a stalemate and the rest yeah. of World War One would be fought as it was, right? So in this alternate universe, after playing this game, World War One most likely ended in the exact same way. Yes. A stalemate across the Western Front and a four or five years worth of blood and Yeah. You know, bloodshed and, and agony. But Interesting concept, interesting game, lots of really neat elements. Yeah, and truly, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, this is one of those I can really say an introductory war game. Yeah, I can say that no one that couldn't play this. It has concepts, concepts that are familiar to most normal board gamers. Yeah, like. For, you think of the Germans, it's a race game from one side of the board yeah. to the other. It's a race game, it's got press your luck element. Those are games that yeah. are elements that are in Euro games. That are going to draw people in. Yeah. and uh, Look at a dice. And it's Hollenspiel. So they yeah. provide you with all these dice. Thank goodness. Yeah. So many games don't give you enough dice. And it kills me. Which, you know, gamers, we all have enough dice. I know. But, but to, this shows me that they care. Well, yeah. Because then you can lug this around and it's got everything contained. You yes. don't have to worry about, oh, did I put a six-sider in? Or eight six-siders. Yeah, because you roll a lot of dice when you're yeah. sieging these fortresses. Having enough dice is important to me. Yeah. Great counters. Everything's clear. The yes. artwork is clear. So and Anya, Anya Zielkowska, and I probably mentioned said it wrong, sorry. She did the art. And she did a fantastic yeah, job. Yes, she did a great job. She's done several of their games, and I've interviewed her. We did an interview on, yeah. the, on the blog like a year and a half ago. But this is a beautiful game. A cool, you know, I, you know, it's a very striking looking box. Oh well. yeah, yellow and blue, and really great logo. I think they did a really good job on this. Now, one other thing, we've talked a lot about Holland Spiel off camera. You know, we've played a couple of their games, and they're they're always really, I think, very cool. They they always give you something. Yeah, this gives you a, a you know a really great intro war game. Played things like Supply Lines of the American Revolution. It's it a, gives you something totally different. It's kind of a fascinating, mind-melting, different type of a game. Yes. And we talked, I remember when we've played that, it's like, you can lose this game in the first round. <laughs> yeah, which is and, what and, basically happened to me. <laughs> but those games are really fun, and they do a lot of those. I want to use the word eclectic. Yeah. Or maybe, I don't want to say sideshow, but I want to say... The creative. Creative, artistic type. Just interesting things that yeah. you don't... You might not have all seen before. So if you haven't checked out Hollenspiel, I, I recommend you go ahead and check out. They've got about, uh, well, this game is number... 39. 39. So they've, they've got, got 45 games. 44, 45 games. They're 35 to $40. They have sales often. And you can get 
um, like you, you get hard. Um, I think now they offer boards and or their roll their roll maps or something. They're just upgraded maps. Okay, okay. Um, but this map looks really good. Yeah. It's just a paper map. But so thanks Hollandspiel. I, I think they always do a really good job with their games. Um, Tom and Mary are not only are they interesting people, they really do a great job with yeah. the games that they choose to publish. So yeah, appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been Brave Little Belgium from Holland Spieler, as designed by Ryan Heilman, Dave Shaw. Great intro war game. Yes. Um, again, you can play this almost anyone. So thanks guys for watching. I've been Alexander, and I'm Grant.